not going to visit you until the time is right. Until the time is right. Now, now here, he's saying, I will visit you. But I'm not going to visit you until the time is right. There's something in you. He said, after 70 years be accomplished. And everybody knows that, that the number seven is a number of completion. It is a number of perfection. So, so God is saying, there are some things that you have to deal with. Because there's something in you that I'm perfecting. That I'm completing. That I'm bringing to a place of fulfillment. So there, there are times. And, and this is what I hear the Lord saying. He said, tell them that for, for those few people in the room right now. Who were struggling and, and upset because they felt like God wasn't dealing with them and God wasn't talking to them. And they felt like God had, had left them. God said, I didn't leave you. He said, I just couldn't visit you like I wanted to because I had to let your situation perfect you. Hmm. Yes. The Bible says like this, it said, tribulation, work and patience. Patience, yes. patience experience, experience hope and hope make it not a shame. Now, if, if you understand the beginning is tribulation. The end is not a shame. Y'all missed it. Let me say it one more time. It starts with tribulation. But when tribulation gets finished, he said you won't be ashamed. Are y'all hearing me? So, so you got to understand very strategically in this, in this moment, in this prophetic hour, in this prophetic moment, I hear the Lord saying after this. In other words, your tribulation has worked itself to your perfection. God has used the very thing the enemy tried to use to kill you. And he said, I, I was in it when he started. Can you just touch your neighbor, encourage him, and say, God was in it from the beginning. And there are times when, when the times when you don't really sense God like you're used to sensing him is not because he's not there. It's because what he's doing is that there was there was one time if you read, uh, thank you God, if you read Exodus chapter number 12 and chapter number 13, uh, at the very end of chapter number 12, uh, 13 rather, rather, I believe, God says to the children of, children of Israel, uh, he says the, the, the pillar of cloud, the, the glory, the, the representation of who I am to you will never depart from you. That's what he tells them in, in the wilderness. Right. It says, and, and the glory cloud never departed. Right. Right. Now that's significant. He says, "I'll always go before you." But the one time in the scripture where you where you find that the glory cloud was not in front of God's people was when Pharaoh was behind them. So the one time they didn't see glory in front of them, it was because glory was covering their behind. It had their back, and it was keeping the enemy that was that was strategically designed to kill and enslaved, it was the power of God Amen. that was protecting the children of Israel so that Pharaoh could not get to them even though he wanted them, he could not get to them because the glory left the front of them and went to the back of them. Yes. Yes. So I need you to understand, now watch this, God never left them, he just changed position. Oh, somebody need to grab a hold of this. Because somebody, because you, you're, you're struggling because you don't see God in front of you. And God said, don't worry, I'm still with you. And the times when you don't sense God in front of you is because God is behind you. And because there are some things that are trying to impede your progress. There are some things that, that, that the enemy is strategically trying to put in your way to try to break your will and to try to break your mindset and to try to make you lose faith. But God said, don't worry about it. I got your back. Can you look at your neighbor and say, God says he has your back. Okay, I, I, let, 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 me, let me say it again. You got to say it like you mean it. Look at somebody and tell them like you mean it. Say, God says he has your back. So, so you got to understand, understand that I told you I'm not, I'm not going to preach. But I'm, I'm just going gonna, gonna to couch everything I say in, in scripture. So, so if you understand that principle that God will then get your back, there are times where you're not going to feel him and he's using the situation. Okay, let, let me, let, let's, let's talk about uh, uh, Peter. Peter. Uh, Y'all know Peter. Peter is uh, the apostle 
who preached the church into existence. Right? On the day of Pentecost, Peter stood up and said, these are not drunk as you suppose. They're not drunk. They're not drunk with the wine you think. They're drunk on new wine. They're drunk on a wine you haven't tasted yet, but we're going to allow you to partake in today. That Peter. But what you need to understand about that Peter is, Peter got a revelation. And his revelation brought a, brought trouble that he had not anticipated. Okay, Jesus said to his disciples, he said, who do men say that I am, right? Said, yeah. and, and they say it, well, some say uh, you're one of the major prophets, some say that you're Elijah, some say that you're John the Baptist. Uh, see, most people don't really know who you are. And Jesus said, okay, that's what they say, what do you say? Now notice, no other apostle said anything except Peter. And when Peter spoke up, he said, I know who you are. You are the Christ, the, the son of the living God. Jesus responds immediately. That's a revelation. Because flesh and blood didn't reveal that to you, but my father in heaven revealed that to you. And upon that revelation, upon this rock, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Now watch this. He's telling us, in essence, if you can get a revelation of who God is, he said, I'll use you and the revelation you got and I'll protect you from the wiles and the plan of the enemy. The gates of hell will try to get you, but they won't get you. Yes. Are y'all with me? Now watch this. So, so uh, during, during that discourse, Jesus and Peter begin to have a conversation. And he says, Simon, Simon, Satan desires you. He desires to have you that he may sift you as wheat. Let me say it one more time. Satan desires you that he may sift you as wheat. He wants to let me, Lino would tell you, let me say, the devil wants you back. Okay, see, now, 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 y'all, y'all, y'all don't worry me today. Uh, if you understood the power that you were sitting beside, if you understood the level of grace that was sitting beside you, you wouldn't talk to them with this little meager, weak voice. But when you understand that you're sitting beside a treasure in earthen vessel, y'all are quiet in here today. You, we are not just people who come to church. We are people who house the presence of God. We are the tabernacles of the Holy Ghost. We are the place that God has chosen to reside in. And when you understand that God is not going to just live in anything, but the fact that he has chosen to live in you means that there is something significant about who you are and significant about what you represent to the kingdom. Wants you back. 